Hey everybody, uh, welcome to our weekend check-in video for Psych 45 Research Methods for Saturday, September 16th. Like I always do, I'm just going to go over a few reminders and clarifications, anything I think you need to know that will help you uh, do well in the course and try to keep it short and sweet. So let's get started. Uh, first up here, your most recent Chapter 5 discussion, that was due last evening there Friday, and a lot of you had some really great remarks and thoughts about using uh, artificial intelligence for uh, facial recognition. And the purpose that I, again, had you to listen to this radio program or at least read the transcript there about this issue is that it certainly shows how one has to be careful when you're going to use a uh, sample to represent a larger population. I mean, this shows it in a very distressing sort of way. So, again, outside of the content of this particular issue in the radio program as depicted, which, again, is very distressing to learn about, I imagine some of you have not heard about these sorts of problems yet, but now you know, is that I also wanted you to have a really uh, experience there to think about and some time to think about, well, how you really have to be careful about the sample that you get and really make sure it does represent that population, as I was uh, just uh, saying. So, uh, next up here, we have uh, next week, Monday and Wednesday, we're going to be covering uh, mostly uh, Chapter 6. Uh, we finished off last time on Wednesday identifying the different research strategies. There were five of them, you might recall. And we just started the next half of the chapter content, which is all about validity. And so we are going to be spending some time uh, next week there going over both external and internal validity. These issues around what are called threats to validity for both internal and external validity there. And also some interesting issues that we're going to see for uh, the rest of the course. Uh, these variables called extraneous variables, which can sometimes become what you're going to learn are called confounding variables. And also, towards the end of the chapter, these things called artifacts. So some really interesting things. Again, this is our last table-setting chapter for the course. I think I told you there on uh, Monday of this week. And so there's a lot of important stuff in this chapter. We're going to see, you know, constantly a return to some of the content in this particular chapter throughout the rest of the course. And it's really important that you pay attention to this content and really kind of keep it on your radar as we go through the last uh, remaining chapters of our course here. And also on Wednesday, we are going to be starting a bit of our next Chapter 7, which is our first strategy chapter, the Experimental Research Strategy. And I know you've all learned about experiments before, as I told you in class and your other psychology courses, but you probably haven't learned all the drill-down detail that we're going to get into, because there's a lot more to the experiments that maybe you have learned about before. So that's part of this course. And so this is a really great place to start for a research strategy, is to get into the uh, experiments there. Lots of really good examples, too, so uh, do pay attention to that. We are going to have our quiz on Chapter 6 uh, this coming Wednesday on the 20th, so just make sure that you're ready for that as well. Uh, next up here, the big thing is that Part 1 under APA Style Literature Review Paper. Tonight is the final uh, deadline to submit the paper. If you haven't already, most of you have, but a few of you have not, as I'm recording this here on a Friday evening. So make sure that you have your paper submitted there, and per the policies on your syllabus, and in the instruction area and in the submission area. And by the way, you'll find a dedicated APA literature review module uh, below um, Unit 5 of our course material on our Canvas course page. You'll scroll down all the way down to the bottom. You'll see uh, the dedicated APA literature review module. You want to open up the instructions for Part 1 if you haven't done so already. And per the, per the information in the instructions, as I was saying, and in the submission area and on your syllabus, uh, there are deductions for late submissions. It's 10% for being late and then 5% additional deduction for every 24-hour period after that. And after 72 hours from the original due day and time, which was Wednesday earlier this week, so that makes that Saturday of this evening at 11.59 p.m. You won't be able to submit any longer, so please make sure you get it in uh, by that time. I will be posting your feedback from Part 1 soon, so keep an eye out for that. I will post an announcement, and also uh, you'll get a notification from the Canvas Gradebook that your score has been posted. And uh, definitely take a look at that feedback I give you. It tends to be fairly detailed because you are going to write a second component or part of your APL, APA style literature review paper, the outline. And the part one feedback is very helpful when you uh, construct your outline there because I don't want to see anybody getting dinged for the same mistakes twice. So you will want to use that feedback to uh, craft your outline. So again, you don't make the same mistakes uh, twice there. So get stuck. All right, that's everything I wanted to say for right now. If you got any questions in the meantime, reach out via email on Canvas, and I'll get back to you. Otherwise, hope you're having a great weekend. Uh, watch those uh, lecture videos, and I will see you in class uh, on Monday. Take care until then. Bye-bye.